Hey, Bulls and Bears, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. We've got an economic financial news roundup and uh, some very important news to get caught up on today. Uh, now, there's just so much happening right now. Um, the very interesting thing, though, is the narrative on this inflation. They're trying to say, and we're talking about the quote unquote leaders here, they're trying to say that the inflation is because of the war. Well, of course, that exasperated the problem, but inflation has been going on. Rising prices, rising cost of living has been going on for years. And I'm not just blaming the current administration. This goes back, way back. Uh, even starting in 2016, we saw the tariffs and we saw the price increases begin to um, to accelerate. Um, the latest events in the last couple of years, you know, has just been on top of what we've already been seeing as a long-term trend. So anyone saying out there that the war and the uncertainty from the war and the uh, fallout from the war, uh, the sanctions, the export disruptions, uh, the rising energy costs because of the, um, the, uh, the fuel supply and the oil supply. Anyone saying that that is the only cause of this definitely needs to have their head examined, right? And uh, don't believe what they're telling you. And now we have uh, lawmakers out there and uh, people like that talking about, well, we need more stimulus checks because the war uh, caused this inflation. So it's time for more stimulus checks. Well, did the stimulus checks that have been sent out starting in 2020, did those fix any of the current problems uh, that we're seeing today? No. Um, we see late rents are now starting to increase again. Evictions are starting to increase. Of course, all the rescue programs. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are done now with the rent forgiveness in most areas uh, being uh, put on the back burner. I think it'll be back in some form. Um, and uh, who knows, maybe more stimulus checks. Maybe uh, that's what they're going to try to do again. Uh, but will it fix the problem? No, it's probably just going to lead to prices rising even faster because people that have no money to spend will now have money to spend. And uh, which is, you know, a good thing if you're starving, but people are going to go out and shop and uh, prices are going to surge. And all the people that are not working, not producing anything um, will have money to spend. So it's going to be more shortages and rising prices will accelerate. Uh, here's another article here. Soaring gas prices are hurting Americans. It's time for more stimulus checks. So the solution is more debt, uh, more spending and more um, uh, checks. Uh, instead of addressing the underlying problems, the underlying issues, they are just adding fuel uh, to the fire. And that's what's being called for, more fuel to the fire. And the economy is gonna continue to get hotter and hotter uh, from an inflationary standpoint. Now on the topic of rising food costs, we've got countries including Lebanon. Lebanon, they're rationing flour. We've got grain hoarding over in Hungary. Um, what's happening over now in Europe is causing more disruptions with supplies, including fertilizer to American farmers, and it's causing prices to skyrocket. And look at some of these numbers. Together, Ukraine and Russia account for nearly 30% of wheat, 17% of corn, and over half of sunflower seed oil exports. Uh, bottom line, people expect things to continue to get more expensive. Now, you may see pullbacks. We saw a recent pullback in oil. Um, what's going to happen? Is it going to drop back down to $70 per barrel tomorrow? Uh, no, that's very unlikely. However, we did see oil go to negative when the great sickness first emerged. And uh, you ask yourself, you know, how can something go to a negative price? Well, that's because it's paper. Uh, derivatives of the real commodity that are being traded. Uh, so, for example, you could not have went and uh, gotten any uh, oil uh, and and get, gotten paid for getting oil. So, a negative price normally means you would get paid for buying something or for taking something. Uh, but that's what happens when real prices are manipulated with paper trading, paper derivatives. Recent article out of Bloomberg. Record food prices could leap another 22% on the chaos in Europe right now. And that's coming out of the UN. Uh, another 22% on top of what we've already seen. Um, that's going to cause a lot of pain to households here in the U.S. And uh, most people here in the U.S. are just one or two paychecks away 
uh, from being on the streets. And that's why you see continued calls uh, for rent forgiveness, more stimulus checks, uh, cancel rent, and all those types of, uh, of, of movements that are happening right now. Uh, five straight weeks of losses now in the Dow Jones. Um, this is because of what's happening over in Europe again. Um, will this be resolved? Will it not be resolved? Uh, will the markets just be reinflated uh, if and when this is resolved? Just like we saw when the health crisis came out, we saw a big 40% drop uh, more in some other indexes, but then um, markets pushed back to new all-time highs with 80% of all dollars in existence being created or printed just in the last two years. And we see the Fed a balance sheet about $9 trillion. They're talking about unwinding their $9 trillion balance sheet. Uh, folks, it's not going to happen. Um, don't believe what they're telling you. Um, they couldn't do it even if they tried. I don't really think they're even going to try because they know how much pain that's going to cause in the markets. Uh, $30 trillion national debt and climbing. Um, 200, close to $200 trillion unfunded liabilities. Um, programs that can never be paid for uh, only with more debt uh, and that's going to cause more pain down the road now we've got a lot of fear uh, entering the crypto world we've got rich dad poor dad author out there robert kiyosaki saying to sell bitcoin that the government's going to crack down on it um, but he's been advocating buying cryptos and bitcoin now for years but now he sees the u.s seizing all crypto after this executive order uh, from the current president. Now, if you have something on a paper wallet, they cannot seize the entire uh, blockchain, so it's impossible, but you have to have it out of these exchanges. What they can do is they can come in and shut down the exchanges, they can confiscate your funds from these online exchanges, and that's where your money's not safe, your crypto's not safe on an online exchange. Uh, having paper wallet and your own private keys uh, is the solution to that. They could still crack down in other ways by implementing uh, higher and higher taxes. Uh, so invest accordingly. And um, I don't trust these exchanges at all. I'm a big advocate of uh, paper wallets and uh, off exchange storage or what's known as cold storage for your cryptos. But nonetheless, even the scare or the talk of this could cause some major volatility in these cryptos and I continue to uh, urge everybody to use caution but you might want to hold uh, some gunpowder on the side and you know keep your powder dry as they say because there could be some pretty amazing buying opportunities coming up in the crypto world um, but I continue to stack uh, crypto uh, more silver um, eventually you're going to see the price take off once the suppression is uh, uncovered or revealed and i think uh the rest of this year is going to be very very interesting and uh the food shortages the rising prices uh what types of investments can we do to uh, try to stay on top of all this to try to stay ahead of the curve well uh keep your powder dry because there's going to be a lot of opportunities and a lot of interesting things happening please like and subscribe uh, you do help support this channel when you click that like button and when you subscribe thank you very much we'll be back with more updates be well everybody peace